Hello tubers, how are you today? Well, I hope everyone's having a, a good day. Today I wanted to go over uh, something that to me was uh, bothering me, something I questioned. And I don't know if you guys remember, but um, it's regarding Abraham and uh, the sacrifice that God wanted him to do when he said to Abraham uh, regarding, well, I'll, let me read it. It's in, it's in Genesis uh, verse or chapter 22 verses one through, through two. And it says here, Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, Lord, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. So this is what Okay, so let's go to another verse in the Bible in Genesis 16. And it says here, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had bore, bore him no children, but she had an Egyptian slave called Hagar. So she said to Abram, The Lord has kept me from having children. Go, Sleep with my slave. Perhaps I can build a family through her. And uh, lo and behold, uh, a Hagar became pregnant, and they named that child Ishmael. So basically, that was Abram's, who later was called Abraham, first child. Ishmael was his first child who he had through a Egyptian slave, and her name was Hagar. So that was, that's my dilemma. My dilemma is, and it's interesting, that God said, take your son, your only son. Now, at that time, he had two sons because Ishmael, was born about 12 to 13 years later. If you want to understand the time frame, which is kind of funny, uh, Abraham, or Abram at the time, he had a child, his first child, by the name of Ishmael, and he was 86 years old. When he had his second son, by the name of Isaac, he was 100 years old. And Sarah, who was before called Sarai, she was a young uh, 90-year-old when she had her only son, Isaac, which is one heck of a feat. And uh, it's kind of funny that, you know, a woman who has a child at 90 years old uh, it's got to be heaven sent because, uh, wow. Anyway, uh, so this is my dilemma, or this is my question. My question is, why did God say, say to Abraham, take your son, your only son, and then later he says, whom you love, Isaac. So what is God referring here? God knew full well that Abraham had another child. He had a first child by the name of Ishmael. But Ishmael, what? He was not born from Sarah. He was born from an Egyptian slave. Out of wedlock, right? Out of wedlock, her name was Hagar. And so this is what you have to del deliberate on. Why did God choose to, to have a burnt offering of Isaac 
when his first son was Ishmael. And I guess what we can only do, or what we have to surmise by this, is that his first child, Ismail, was a uh, idol word like child, a bastard. And in God's eyes, that was not his son. So this is the dilemma. You know, he's really, it's, you trying to say, this is what uh, the reason why I go over these things is we're trying to understand God's ways, God's mentality. Because I mean, if, you know, that's the whole, that's the whole thing. You know, we have to understand what God wants, what God needs, what God desires, because that's how you get into God's flow. And um, so. We, this is what we have to understand because the way I was looking at things was, you know, I understood that Ishmael was God's or Abraham's first son. And I was thinking, well, why would, and, you know, everything is the first son, you know, everything, everything is rolled up going to the ancient times. The first son was the most important son or the most important child. It seemed like that was the person who kind of uh, had the most responsibility. And so I figured, well, why did God single out Isaac when Isaac was the second son? He wasn't the first one. But in God's eyes, in God's eyes, he says, I want you to uh, have a burnt offering for your only son, Isaac. And then he says, whom you love, whom you love. See, in the Bible, it didn't have to say that, whom you love. Because it says, take your son, your only son, Isaac. No. It said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac. So I guess that was the thing. He says, no, no, I don't want God. I guess God was saying or inferring, I don't want you to take Ishmael because he's the one that you don't love. Or you don't have that same love that you do for, for Isaac. And if you're gonna have a burnt offering, I want the best. I don't want I don't want the hand-me-downs, I don't want this the leftovers, I want the best of the best, right? So um so God was saying to Abraham, take your son, really to him, the his child out of wedlock was to God it wasn't even a son to him. That was just uh I don't know how, how God will even look at it, but it didn't count. <clears throat> because he says, take your son, your only son. So he got dismissed, totally dismissed, counting Ishmael, whom you love, Isaac. Man, that's powerful. That one line, and it's not even a whole, it's not even a whole verse, it is extremely powerful. Because God wants the best. He doesn't want, <laughs> he doesn't want, you know, hand me downs and, and and leftovers. So God, when God requested a, a burnt offering, He says, "Well, I'm I'm taking the best." And yeah, I'm now skipping over Ishmael because he he wasn't he is not your best, and he's not the one that you love. You know, so when God wants sacrifice to Him, He wants it to hurt. He wants it to be divine. He, I mean, He wants He wants that. He wants a sacrifice. I mean, a sacrifice, you know? So it's not like, hey, you know, okay, I'll take out a $5 bill and give it to God. No, God wants the $100 bill. He wants the $200 bill, you know? He wants it to hurt. So um, just kind of understanding God's ways and God's intentions and God's needs that, you know, when you do sacrifice unto God, when you pray unto God, you know, you have to give up. He wants you to give up. You know that you know that ten percent, right? That tithing, the ten percent, and uh, if you can do more, better, right? Ten percent is the minimum. That's the base. And if you give fifteen, twenty percent, even more, better. And if you can give of your time, better. And you uh, give up of your efforts. You know, selecting a certain part of your day for God and and to give up to uh, to His. Uh, to his own children, right? 
Jesus said, if you give unto me, you give unto, you know, if, if you give to, to who I, to my friend, to, to people, uh, you're giving unto me, you know, it's like, so if you, God says, or Jesus said, you know, if you give unto my, of my needy people, you're giving like, you're giving to me. So, um, so basically God is basically saying to us, you know, uh, 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 I want the best and the brightest. I don't want the hand-me-downs. Um, <clears throat> so this kind of goes back to what, you know, our children and if our children are being born in or out of wedlock and how God counsels children, how he sees those children. It's interesting how God looks at things, and which is a lot different than how we look at things. And uh, so I just wanted to bring this out particular verse or these two particular verses or chapters in chapters um, 22 and 16, how they kind of vary where um, God requested uh, his only son. It's, just, it's really, it's really uh, uh, remarkable how God just negated uh, uh, Ishmael. And um, there's things to think about and, and that you can contemplate that. There's, this particular, these particular verses are heavy duty. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably maybe even do a series about the, this particular uh, two, two verses or two chapters because there's a lot to it in, in regards to um, in, to, in regards to the religions of the uh, Christian religion, the Jewish religion, and the um, and the Muslim religion. This is where this is where it really starts to branch off, and really have to understand have to understand this particular these particular verses in Genesis because it, a lot of our problems today in the current day are coming from this particular time. And so we have to understand the, these times, those or those times, to understand our times, because that was the beginning, and this is flowing down onto us later, years, years, centuries later. So we need to understand what what happened with Abraham and with Sarah, with Hagar, with Ishmael. These things have ramifications. So uh, it's best to know these things to understand where we are and where we're at. And where we're heading. So I hope you understood the, uh, the video. Uh, please give it a thumbs up. Any comments or questions, please leave them behind. And as always, God bless.